God is dead. Famous phrase by Nietzsche. God is dead. Now, if you haven't studied Nietzsche, if you haven't read any Nietzsche, and you just know him by some of his more famous aphorisms, that being the most famous, God is dead, then you might not know that that phrase, God is dead, actually has two meanings, two possible meanings, at least two possible meanings. God is dead first. God is dead. He doesn't exist. Okay, that's one meaning. But the other far more important meaning in the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche and was discussed far more often and the implications therein is God is dead as an organizing principle of Western civilization. God is dead as a flag for us to rally around. Religion is kaput. It's over. That was the far more important meaning as far as the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche goes. He discussed that far more often. And check it out. He wasn't super stoked about the idea. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't like, God is dead and the 20th century is going to be rocking because of it. He was actually horrified by the prospect. Matter of fact, if you, uh, if you read Friedrich Nietzsche, it's possible to read him as a prophetic voice of the 20th century in what actually occurred. His take on it was that God is dead as an organizing principle of Western civilization and human beings are going to devolve into nihilism, potentially. God is dead and we in trouble <laughs> because we need some sort of organizing principle to rally around that we all believe in. Now, obviously, he didn't believe in God. But he recognized on some level that people needed th their, their religions or we had the potential to devolve into chaos and nihilism. And he was correct if you look at the 20th century. Now, if you're one of these people who is saying that Adolf Hitler was a Christian, please stop saying that. I mean... Just read a little bit of history because that is just such a, it's such a nonsensible argument if you know anything at all about history. Yes, I know. You can find some, some examples of speeches where he said, I'm a Christian and I worship the Christian God. Okay, but by that same logic, then Ronald Reagan is a hippie liberal. Because you can find some speeches where Ronald Reagan gives lip service to liberal ideology. By the same logic, Barack Obama is a right-wing conservative because you can find some speeches where Barack o Obama gives lip service to right-wing ideology. The point is these people are politicians. Just because it comes out of a politician's mouth doesn't mean that's the thing that they practiced. He was a politician in a deeply Catholic country and a deeply Lutheran country. Obviously, he's going to say every now and again, I'm a Christian or I believe in Jesus or whatnot. The Nazis did have a religion. So you can go look this up and disabuse of your, yourself of the notion immediately that it was a Christian movement because it was not. There was a real religion to Nazism. There were creeds. There were dogmas. There were doctrines. It was a religion of the state. If it had any God, that God was Adolf Hitler. Period. It was a religion of the state. It was a religion of race. They believed in the superiority of the German race. They believed in, in the power of the state. They believed in militarism. They had creeds, and they strongly believed those creeds. And if you line them up, you get to about line number 30. Maybe some of them were Christian. But the actual modus operandi, the actual thing that was driving them, was something completely other than Christianity. And if you don't believe me, just take, take this one book. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, William L. Shire. Excellent book. 
thoroughly, thoroughly authoritative on the subject of Nazi Germany. It's actually a really good read. Read that. You'll, you'll immediately understand that this is not a Christian movement, that that's an absurd, nonsensical claim. So, where am I going with this? Because Nietzsche recognized the potential for the nihilism of the 20th century, the potential that actually arose. It is possible to see Nietzsche as a voice of prophecy, as prophetic about what actually did occur in the history of the 20th century. And it is possible to read the history of the 20th century as an erosion of traditional religious values, Christianity. We're talking about Western civilization here. It is entirely possible to see the, 20th, the history of the 20th century as just that, as an erosion of traditional Christian religious values as a means of organizing, organizing our culture and our civilization. And if you look at it that way, it becomes quite horrifying. 